find it. Huh, find what? The planet you live on. <laughs> okay. Well, the lens cap's on, so. It really only takes a few moments to gain an appreciation of just how tough it is out here. They've been coming across sniper fire, gunfire, border rounds. You can see really just how intense it is here. We have to wrap it up right now. Quite anxious about spending too much time on scene. Those with the kids really struggling to get away. They feel like they won't be able to outrun the war. They thought the whole border was open. People are just trying to bust through towards what they think is going to be a better life. These nurses, these doctors really have nerves of steel. You can't help but be struck by how interconnected our world is. Arwa Damon, CNN. Peter Jager. I'm from Pretoria in South Africa. I'm a co-owner of a wedding and function venue. In our situation, we are we are concerned because we are in a in a business where you have to have contact with people. What is very very optimistic for me is how customers that's already booked with us is treating this the situation and how optimistic they are. But suddenly we have all this. All of us has this common. Um, enemy, and we are we are getting together, and people are much more understanding. That will be probably one of the biggest things that I that I look forward to going out of the lockdown, going into normal life again in the near future. We have two boys. It's amazing how adaptable children are, and how quickly they understand. They don't have to understand the intricacy of the disease and what is happening, but they understand very well that we are not allowed to mingle with other people. We are supposed to sanitize, keep our um, social distance. And as long as they understand that, we can protect them. And we are very focused to do our part to not spread the disease or contract any virus. in Wuhan, China. In Yokohama, Japan. CNN in Abu Dhabi. I'm Nermal Barid in Sinjar, Iraq. Northern Syria, Lagos, Nigeria. Stockholm. Outside London. CNN, Sao Paulo, Brazil. In Mexico City. This is CNN. It was a speech that would propel him to the national stage and ultimately the presidency. When then Illinois State Senator Barack Obama gave the keynote address at the 2004 Democratic National Convention, it was a moment few could forget and showcased the power of an electrifying address. There is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There is the United States of America. There is not a black America and a white America and Latino America and Asian America. There's the United States of America. CNN senior political analyst John Avlon joins me now. He's also the author of Washington's Farewell and Wingnuts and a one-time speechwriter for former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Good to have you with us. Good to see you, Rosemary. So well, a lot of notable speakers lined up for the week for the DNC convention. We've already heard from some, including from former First Lady Michelle Obama. What stood out in her address particularly and what is the key to a great and memorable convention speech? It's, it's such a great and important question. You know, Michelle Obama is actually a great communicator in her own right. And she really has an ability to speak from the heart, but to throw, throw some subtle jabs. And I think that the heart of her speech was about character. She said it's the most important thing in a presidency, and it's what's most glaringly lacking about this president. And she tried to tie, in fact, aspects of the Obama legacy to a broader bipartisan legacy of presidents shoring up international organizations, mentioning Reagan and Eisenhower, too. Republicans and saying that, look, Donald Trump has been a stark departure from that, and he has an inability to empathize with other people. And that's what the presidency is about. Um, you know, a great convention speech, and there have been many of them, 
um, ultimately is about trying to put forward a positive vision of the nation and project it forward. Um, some Democrats sometimes have a hard time embracing uh, patriotism in a full sense. Um, some want to keep it at arm's length. But successful progressives in particular know how to tie their vision to something that's fundamentally patriotic. Martin Luther King did that very well throughout his career, and great speeches do. And you're seeing that tone get hit over and over so far in this convention. Yeah, we certainly saw that uh, very much at the start of it, didn't we? And also Republican John Kasich spoke. How significant is it that he's from the rival party? And uh, do you think that could potentially change the hearts and minds of other Republicans who may be questioning the direction of their party right now, which, of course, is clearly the hope here on the part of the Democrats? I, I think it's easy to forget how extraordinary that moment was. And it wasn't just John Kasich. It was Christy Todd Whitman, former governor of uh, New Jersey and a Bush administration official. It was Meg Whitman, a businesswoman who ran for governor of California as a Republican, a close ally of Mitt Romney. It was Susan Molinari, a former Republican representative who spoke at the 96 Republican convention. So it's not just Kasich, but it is so extraordinary and unusual to have that many members of the opposition party line up to say that they cannot support the incumbent president of their own party. As Meg Whitman said, he's bad at business. John Kasich said he's bad for the soul of America. Now look, Donald Trump's very popular among Republicans, or to the tune of around 85 plus percent. But there's a large number of influential Republicans who are saying, showing major signs of dissent. And it's very difficult to find folks who voted for Hillary last time who are gonna vote for Donald Trump this time. It is not as difficult to find folks who voted for Donald Trump who aren't gonna do it a second time. And it's almost impossible to imagine that Republicans pulling off anything similar at their convention with this president. Yeah, interesting. And just very quickly, historically, how often has a convention speech moved the needle in any significant way? Look, candidates can get a big